there's a number of pharmaceutical drugs <clears throat> that suppress melatonin production, right? Indeed, there are. Of course, uh, uh, many people who are hypertensive are on something called beta blockers. Beta blockers are very good to treat hypertension. However, they also impede melatonin production because the mechanism by which the nervous system enhances melatonin synthesis in the pineal gland is via beta adrenergic receptors, and those receptors are blocked by these drugs. Quite frankly, most drugs have not been tested relative to specifically inhibiting melatonin, but surely a number of them do. Indeed, pharmaceutical agents, some, we don't know how many because they have not been tested, impact our ability to produce melatonin for sure. There are uh, hundreds of documented <clears throat> pharmaceuticals, <clears throat> but as you said, there may be many more. You know, yeah. I found a, a, sh a quote, short list of several hundred <laughs> when I was researching yeah. for my book that, yeah. that were known to suppress melatonin. And it was kind of a, a, a big epiphany for me, you know, the light bulb, like, oh, no, right? Not only are, are our daily lifestyle habits, and <clears throat> our daily routines, our nighttime habits, reducing our body's production of melatonin, but then many of us are taking pharmaceuticals, or if you're in, in cancer treatment, you're, you know, you're definitely taking pharmaceuticals, and then that's suppressing it even further. And, and if this hormone is as powerful as we think it is in regards to healing and suppressing cancer growth, then we should be doing a lot more to make sure that patients and just regular people are optimizing their melatonin, right? Absolutely, that would be a re reasonable thing to do. Uh, and of course, all individuals who work on melatonin are very familiar with this idea, and individuals like you, and those who take it for sleep also. But melatonin, in my opinion, should be more widely used because of the misuse of light, and especially during aging, uh, there's just so much experimental evidence that would suggest that we could reduce the untoward health effects that we experience with aging by supplementing with melatonin. Uh, for, well, this is one example. I'm 85 years old. I've been taking melatonin for 28 years, knock on wood. I'm in still very good health, but there's a lot of my colleagues who have worked on melatonin who do the very same thing and are doing very well. I would say that's not a controlled study, but animal studies unequivocally show that deferring melatonin related, deferring age related diseases is possible with melatonin. Not only cancer, neurodegenerative diseases. I'm just writing a paper now on Alzheimer's and melatonin. Um, and that's a, a, a very, very debilitating condition. Um, okay, so something else you said, I'd love to, to just uh, highlight, which is the research you mentioned where uh, older folks have lower melatonin. And uh, I just wanted to point out that another correlation there is that older folks also tend to take more prescription medications yeah you're so there right. that there's a fa another factor there too right as we age do we just tend to oh aches and pains problems right chronic diseases start start to manifest and then uh, one two three four five medications are you know all of a sudden circulating in your system so that again <laughs> that kind of plays into the the uh the vicious cycle, you know, of aging and chronic disease and melatonin reduction and, you know, poor lifestyle choices too. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, why not subscribe? Here's a link to do that. And if you'd like to watch the full interview, you can find it at chrisbeatcancer.com. There's a link to it in the description right below this video.